Hello educators, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the question bank manager, specifically in Blackboard Ultra, the newest settings, and how to build a test in Blackboard, coming up. Now, if you haven't seen it, I made another video specifically on test banks, question pools, and how to build out a test, and I'll link that down below. But this video is going to look at the newest setting when it comes to managing those banks and being able to build your own bank within Blackboard Ultra. So let's take a look at my screen, and we'll walk you through that process. So as we jump into our Ultra course, we're going to find all of the setup under the same place that we would look, the question banks, the manage banks link. When we click this, we can see that it actually has a different view here. We can now see that it's in a list view. Uh, we have a plus sign here up at the top. We can sort them out. Uh, you know, we can see how many number of questions that are in there when it's released. Uh, but under this plus sign, we have where we can create a new one or import a file. Import a file is very similar to the last one. It's just that where we can go and find that zip folder. So if I click on this, and go out to a folder that I have. I can see that I have uh, a few compressed files here. Uh, I'm gonna select chapter three. And as we do this, it'll upload that zip folder with all of the questions in it from chapter three from my publisher. And that is uh, that hasn't changed. It's been the same exact settings before. Uh, I can also go to this plus sign and hit new and this is going to give me the ability to start building my own. So now I can title it uh, maybe question uh, bank one, maybe it's a chapter one. I can give it a title and then anywhere there's a plus sign, I can find all of the different question formats that Blackboard Ultra offers, whether it's a formula, a numeric, essay, fill in the blank, matching, multiple choice, true and false. So let's just click true and false once we click this, we can now see it looks very similar to the old page uh, where when we were building out our pool for our test, we saw that we have the filter criteria over here. We can see what source it's coming from. We can filter out what question types we have available on this page. Uh, but we're actually able to build our question here. Uh, are we having fun in Ultra? True or false, that's a good question to have. Uh, we can set this by points here. We can later change that uh, based on our quiz setup that we have or a test or assessment setup here. But very straightforward, we're building a true and false. Again, we can still attach items. We can link things. We can put images and media in this. One thing that's really great about this, if we put an image associated with this true or false, when this question appears in the pool, the image now comes with that. So we can actually uh, put an image in here, maybe ask the student about this particular image, uh, and we can ensure that that image is going to go wherever this question goes. Uh, now, if we do decide to go ahead and make a change, now that we've created this, this question, but we've already associated this question bank to chapter one, if we make a change in this question bank, it will actually affect that question pool. So I'll show that here in a little bit later, but just know that I now built out a test bank, a question bank for chapter one. I put a true and false question there. I can then start building out other questions. Maybe it's an essay question, uh, you know, and we can put some placeholder text in there. We can again put our points based on that. We can go out and build maybe a matching, and again, the matching, all of the test or the question setup is exactly the same. Going back to my previous page, we can see that this bank now exists. It tells us what number of questions we have. We have those two questions there. The other thing that's great about this is any bank that we've uploaded from a publisher, say this chapter one, 10 principles of economics, I can now click into this publisher bank and see all the questions in there. It also gives me the ability to edit this. So if I like the question here, um, 
in this bank, but again, maybe I want to associate an image with this. Maybe I want to add a link or attach a file of some kind to this question. I can now do that. And now I can successfully edit a question bank that a publisher has provided. A lot of publishers are now locking down their banks. They're not allowing people to have the entire bank. Maybe they have questions sorted out. They can only give maybe multiple choice or essay, something like that. So this is a way that we can go and get the publisher bank from the actual textbook and then edit them according the way we want them to be visible in our course. We can now see that that chapter three bank has come in from that publisher. It shows that we have 195 questions in there. I can simply click on this and see all of the questions that are in this bank. And again, I can go and filter what type that I want to see. I can go and edit any of the content here. If I want to remove questions from this bank, I can do so. So it gives us a lot of options when creating test banks in the Ultra environment. Now that we have a bank of questions to build upon, I want to go into a test and show you how we can build a question pool using these questions. For this, I'm going to go out to a weekly module. I have an example test here, and I'm going to click into this. And again, building out this test, we're going to look at the content area of the test. Find that purple plus sign and hit add question pool. In the question pool, we can now see that it gives us all of the questions that we have within this uh, course. But I can go down and filter out what question banks I actually want to pull from. I can find that I have that chapter three cost behavior. I can click on this. We can see that it is displaying all 195 questions, uh, but maybe I only want those true and false. Again, I can filter by question type. I can select true and false. Maybe I'll select the multiple choice. And now I'm only seeing the multiple choice true and false. I have 151 results here. I want to select all of these. It gives me a bigger option or a bigger pool to pull questions from, uh, specifically if I want to randomize my questions. I can then hit Add Questions. On the adding, I can select how many I want, uh, how many points I want them to be. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just make them 10 each. And I only want students to see 15 questions. So again, they're going to get 15 questions. It's going to be a pool from these 151. I can hit save. I can now see that it has determined how many points based on each point value on the questions and how many questions they are viewing. Uh, I can then go and view these questions if I want to and see what ones it pulled. It is pulling that 151 questions. I can see by the title there's a little link icon here that's telling me that it is linked to a particular question pool. If I want to edit this question, I can simply find the ellipsis and hit edit. It does tell me that changes to this question will apply to one assessment. So that means it's going to apply to the assessment that this is linked to. But it is saying that we can edit this and it will make those necessary changes. We can edit the questions right here in the test, or the main thing is we want to go back to that manage banks, find that question pool. Here's that chapter three cost behavior. If I look at those questions, it shows now it's linked to that, uh, you know, that assessment that I have it linked to. If I make an edit or a change, it says, hey, wait a second, this question is linked to an assessment. Any change that I make in this box will affect those other pools. So this is a way that we can build out a test in our, our master course. If we are duplicating that master course to maybe a live section throughout the years, I can make changes to these banks and it will affect all of those banks in the actual course itself. Going back to this test or this assessment, if I'm happy with the settings that I've chosen for this, I can simply leave it at this. If I want to add more questions, say I want to add a section that only features the essay questions from that pool, I can simply add another question pool, go back to this chapter three cost behavior. I can then filter my question type to only feature 
those as, uh, essay questions. I can select those and hit add questions. Now I have two pools within this assessment. It is warning me that this may require some manual grading because they are essay. Maybe I want to use these essays as a way to uh, kind of see what critical thinking skills my students have developed over the course. I'm going to give them 15 points, but I only want to feature three of these here. So now I'm giving them a separate pool of essay questions out of the 14. I can hit save, and now I can see that questions 16 through 18 are going to be from this pool. I can ensure that these are going to be randomized but they will see these questions after they answer those multiple choice true and false. As always, thank you for watching. If you like this content, be sure to like this video and leave any questions that you have in the comment section below. I'm gonna be building out more videos like this, specifically on Blackboard Ultra, helping you build the best course for your digital platform. Thanks for watching.